Hi, I'm Lisa Soames Peck. Welcome to Spellbound Miniatures YouTube channel, and today we're doing the Apothecary Shelves tutorial. Very similar to the base, we have a back, two sides, and a top. In this case, we don't need a base because this will sit on top of the worktop, or um, if you're doing one, or the top of the shelf base cabinet, drawer base cabinet, uh, whichever version you're doing of that. And you could also make these as standalone shelves. And if you do want to, you could just cut another piece like the top and make a base so that you have got kind of a self-contained cabinet. The slightly smaller piece is the shelf and you can cut as many of those as you want. So in this one, I did two shelves. I'm going to do one shelf in one of my cabinets. And then in the third cabinet, I'm going to have no shelves. I'm still going to have the mirror back and I'm going to try and cut a little sort of um, in vinyl or frosting effect, something on the mirror, maybe the name of the shop or might even engrave something. So, you know, like a fancy mirror. So I'm just going to do one shelf on this. Very similar to the base cabinet. The sides go onto the back and then the top covers all of them. And then when you've got that sort of basic cabinet structure there, you could have it plain if you want to, or we've done a sort of little detail frame layer there. Again, you could just have the plain front, but I think it looks quite nice with the extra frame layer on there. Can you see that when it catches the light? Only slightly, but you can definitely see it more in person. So we'll just get on and do that again. There's a little bit of warping on that one. I could use magnets and they would help press it in as it dries. Very simple to construct this one. So let's get going. Okay, finally got those two bits to stick. Um, so we just do the same. We'll put glue on the top edges of all those three pieces and pop the top on. And then just make sure all of the edges line up and they're square. Again, if you're material isn't exactly one and a half mil you might need to sand an edge or two and then you'll probably notice I put a mirror back and this is just some kind of mirrored vinyl quite thick I'll put a link below if I can find where I got it and I cut that to it's slightly narrower than the back is is wide because I wanted it to easily fit in and not wrinkle so we'll put that in the SVG in blue and you but you could cut it by hand if necessary do what we did with the labeled pieces cut it out so that you've got it as a template if you want to cut it by hand, if you're not sure, depending on the material you use, whether you can cut it in the maker. So what I did was I got to this stage with the main cabinet, shelf cabinet glued, and then I stained that piece because I didn't want any stain to go on the mirror. So stained that piece. I glued the archway onto the back part of the frame and I stained those and I also stained my shelves separately so then once they're all stained and dried I could put the mirror in 
glue the shelf in and then glue the frame on top. So I'll go and do that now and then I'll come back and show you all the separate stained bits first and then we'll assemble it from there. Okay, so this is my staining setup. Completely very basic piece of vinyl tablecloth. I just cut them up and used them for painting, staining and gluing underneath. Probably should have newspaper around here, but we don't have newspapers in this house, so I don't have any. And this is the stain that I use. Um, Rustin's wood dye and it is in a walnut and I have a really old paintbrush that I don't even bother cleaning I just use this one here so I keep this mat and paintbrush here all the time and then I have a bit of a kebab stick to help me hold things down turn them over so I actually don't get my hands anywhere near it and also I'm wearing an apron um, one, one of the few times I'll wear an apron because it will flick everywhere. Clothes, skin, probably should wear gloves and a mask and goggles. Uh, give it a really good shake. And then take the lid off. Probably could pour it into a pot to make it easier. And I haven't glued these in. I did just sand the edges the, of the inside bit so that it didn't bow here because like I said this basswood is slightly thicker so it was pushing the sides out um, so I've sanded those down and it's easier I think to just go start with the inside first it really is just a case of painted on and I do it several times it doesn't usually need more than two coats um, get it really thickly on there well saturated you don't need to worry about brush strokes I find with staining it just kind of takes itself I don't know if you can see that in the next chamber along it is of bleeding let me see if I can zoom in hold on the other way there can you see it's bleeding along the wood fibers anyway so I would just now carry on and sort of get the stain in all over all the pieces and then I'll leave them for maybe an hour or two and come back and do another coat and it's quite therapeutic I'll do this I'll show you on the back you can just sort of it it, it just flows can't get it wrong really I think the more you put on the better it looks it's certainly it doesn't just stain it this one it gives it a nice sort of coat it definitely seems to add something to the the patina or the strength of it it has a nice glossy finish it might warp so i like to use less glue and then stain when they're built if you stain the pieces before they're glued in place you might get more warping so um, but you can then just press them overnight under some or well, I use my granite slab or you could use some books it really is that simple but I, I think that also the dark color looks really good so especially for the an apothecary cabinet they tended to have darker wood in those days so that is how I stain, not very scientific, just cover all the surfaces and you. Um, and in a well ventilated area, it can be a little smelly. 
So that's it. Put some music on, relax, paint away. Okay, so we're back with the shelf unit. We've stained the pieces now. You probably can't, there is an archway on there. You might not be able to see that because um, it's so dark. Uh, the other thing to talk about is in the SVG, you'll see the blue rectangle, which is the mirror. What I did is I just cut it out of craft board and then I have this sheet of mirror material and it looks quite dull. That's because it actually has a plastic protective layer on. So I simply turn it over and then you can see there how I've cut that depth. I draw around it with a pencil and then cut it with an X-Acto knife. Uh, you could do it on your Cricut if you wanted to. So I've cut several pieces of mirror because I'm going to have three top sections there. And this, if, um, if you're going to cut it by hand and you've drawn around the shape, then because that will make this slightly bigger, make sure that you cut slightly inside the line. Otherwise you might find that it ends up too big to be able to fit into the shelf sort of cabinet housing there. So make sure you cut slightly inside the line and it will slot in nice and easily. And then I'm using one shelf on this end because I want, I've got some taller bottles that I want to put in. So I will glue that shelf in like that. And then we can simply, what you need to remember to do is once you've glued the mirror in, is to leave a little edge up so that you can remove the protective cover. But I like to leave that on whilst I do the gluing so I can press down on the mirror and not get marks on the actual shiny piece of the mirror. So glue your mirror down, then take off your protective layer and then put your shelf in. Otherwise it would be very difficult to do it the other way around. And once you're happy with your shelf, and I tended to put my glue just at the ends of the shelf, not on the, where it's going on the mirror. Once you're happy with your shelf placement, you can glue the frame layer on top. And it's a good idea to dry fit because now I've done that, it looks like the shelf is too high when without the archway, it doesn't. So have a, have a dry fit if you like, and you can always change the height of the shelf before you glue it in. So that looks good to me there. So I will glue those up. If you didn't want to have the arch shape, you don't need to cut that. You can just have a plain shelf. It really depends on the overall vibe you're going for. So, and then if we imagine I've done that one and we bring these two back in here, what I want to create is a sort of, um, slightly changing in depth effect. So you can see here, I don't know if you can see that or if I can pick it up in one go, but these two ones on the outer side are raised and I want to just have mirror backing on the one in the middle. And so I can put some maybe vinyl writing in there to look like an etched mirror or something. So that's the effect I'm going to go for. So I'll go and glue these all up and then sort of clamp them together and make sure they're really strong. And then we'll come back and look at how we're getting on. Okay, so we are back and I glued and I clamped these three pieces together. And if you remember, I did have this top on the single one. So I took that off. It made a bit of a mess, but it's fine. You sand down the glue. And I expanded sort of, it's the same depth, but 
I made it as long as the three pieces, but I also did a little overhang on the, each end and I've kept it just for the video at the minute, not stained, so you can see the difference. So it will line up with the back, flush with the back and then overhang around. And then I did the same thing. I've glued my two shelf units there and then the one mirror with the frame and that will then go on to there. I'll see if I can pick this up. And you'll see why I wanted the overhang at the side there. So that when you're looking down on it, it has a nice sort of seated look. The shelves look like they're supported on this worktop. So I'll be staining the worktop. I've also cut another piece to go on the bottom and that one won't stick out. That's just to sort of finish up the bottom of these. And all you need to do is, I think it's much better to wait until you've glued this and then measure. And you can hand cut it or you could cut it on your Cricut. This is a bit thick for the Cricut, so that was hand sawn. If you were just going to do another layer of basswood, you could absolutely do a rectangle in design space, the dimensions that, that you want, and cut those out. And I will also, I think, I would like to downlight. I've got some nice little brass downlights that I would like to put in the top of these shelves. And so I need to, uh, let me see if I can kind of, what have I got here? Let's just imagine there's this other piece of wood. Um, I want to create a shelf, obviously nowhere near as big as this, across the top. And then I can have a downlight on this middle one, because at the mid in the minute, there's no nothing there to put the downlight in. So I want to create a shelf that goes over here and have three downlights going down. I might change my mind. Um, but also then maybe have a little bit of a raised um, trim so that we can't see the wires. But if I forget, if I do that, I'll do another video on that and you don't really need to worry about that for this file alone, this SVG. You can make all these bits from the SVG and just, you'll have to make the worktop as wide as however many cupboards you're doing. So that, but that bit's up to you and you can glue them all together. So you, theoretically you could do it four or five units wide or just the original one that I did that was one unit wide was cute. And you don't have to have the shelf on. You could just do a cabinet like that um, so I'm going to stain this worktop and cut and stain the bottom piece and then we will put the legs on and I'm going to do them, I don't know if you can see that, yeah I'll kind of have one in each corner at the back and then one on each corner at the front. So that's it. Thank you for uh, bearing with us and having the patience to build this if you've got this far. And I'll put up some photos now of the complete finished three wide item. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you soon.